Last 11 days to enter to win this truck plus five thousand dollars. Get her started up. We did get the tent work done on the Ford. Looks so much better. So much better. I don't know if you guys remember, but this thing was a complete fishbowl. I mean, you could see straight through this cab. I mean, it was it was clear as day. Now we don't have that issue. And with this truck, we actually went with a 15% tint on the cab on the back side, the driver door, passenger door, and the extended cab windows. And then we did 30% on the windshield. That way you can still see out of it at night, but it does give it a very nice dark look to the cab but it's legal still in a lot of states, so you don't have that issue with having to pull your tin off, and it's still functional at night. It's not so, so, so dark that you're blind as a bat when you're trying to back out of a driveway or something, you know what I'm saying? So if you look real close, you can still see through the windows when you're up close to the truck. It's very, very hard. It's not, it's not easy to see in there. Let me show you from the inside. Those are raindrops, by the way. There's not, they're not bubbles in the tent. The tent, the tent shop that does my tent does a really, really freaking good job. I mean, it's pretty dark in the cab. It's not, it's not like a double five, but I mean, it's pretty dark. What is going on guys and welcome back to another video here on Loud and Proud. I want to first start off this video by saying that you guys can enter to win this 1996 73 Power Show plus $5,000 cash by just placing an order at lmpgear.com before June 14th to get entry towards winning this truck. So today we're going to be doing a comparison between a 2013 67 Power Stroke and a 1996 73 Power Stroke. We're going to go over some of the differences, cost of fixes, cost of maintenance, all that kind of stuff, and then also what it comes down to for towing capacity, reliability, so on and so forth. Let's get into the video and get to comparing. And I'd first like to ask that if you guys enjoyed these types of videos and this style of content, to leave a like on this video so that YouTube can share it with more people and let them know that people like this kind of stuff. And if you don't, well then, I guess you can leave a dislike if you really don't like it that much, but likes are highly appreciated. When it comes down to it for the 7.3 Power Stroke, it's still going to be a V8 configuration just like the 6.7 Power Stroke. For the 7.3 Power Stroke, in terms of cost of maintenance and reliability, 7.3 Power Stroke is a very reliable and proven engine. I'm a firm believer that the 6.7 and the 7.3 are probably Ford's two most sought after engines, 7.3 being probably number one just because it's been around so much longer. It's had such a better reputation over the years because it's been around longer to prove itself. And cost of maintenance, although it's gonna be a lot more than like the 12 Alpha Cummins, is still quite a bit less than a 6.7 Power Stroke. For example, the turbo in this truck, if you need to replace it, it's not that hard to replace, and it's probably gonna run you about 500 to 600 bucks, which is not that bad considering the newer truck turbos cost a whole lot more money, and it costs a lot more to replace with time and hours, so it's really not that bad. When it comes to injectors for a truck like this, you're probably looking between 1500 and 2500 bucks. That's just what I was able to find online, and my dad, growing up, he owned a 7.3. He had to have the injectors replaced at one point, and his 7.3 at about 275,000 miles, and that ran him about $3,000 in terms of parts and labor. The shop did that for him for that cost. Could it be a lot cheaper if you do it yourself? Of course. And again, if you're trying to compare it to a 6.7 Power Stroke, it's a whole lot cheaper. If you're going to try to compare it to like a 12 valve Cummins, because I favor the 12 valve Cummins, in many cases, it's still going to cost you a whole lot more to replace injectors and turbo in this thing than it is a 12 valve, but that's just the nature of a 12 valve compared to this. There's really not much to them. Now, when it comes to like servicing, like oil changes and filters and fuel filters, those are all probably going to stay relatively to the same cost as a 6.7 Power Stroke. In terms of oil, it takes about the same, not the exact same, but it takes about the same. In terms of the cost of it, it's very similar. Same with fuel filters and oil filters. They're, they have their differences, but they're in terms of cost of maintenance, in terms of that aspect, very similar. Now moving over here to the 6.7 Power Stroke. This is probably my second favorite truck that Ford 
has ever put out, and that is gonna be second to the 7.3 Power Stroke. The 7.3 is just classic, it's proven, it's old school. I, I just favor that. Now there's gonna be guys that have a completely different opinion, that's totally fine. This truck, in terms of cost of maintenance, fixes, and so on, let's get into the cost of maintenance and fixes on that. I looked up some parts, and I'm gonna tell you where I found the pricing for this stuff, so you guys have an idea of what I'm talking about. In terms of the turbo, I found that on diesel power products. In terms of the injectors, I found those on injectorsdirect.com, and that's just where I got the prices for the injectors to compare on both of these, and then the turbos were both on diesel power products to compare stock OEM replacement turbos. So in terms of replacing a turbo on this truck, if you go with a stock OEM replacement, not upgrading to a 2017 plus style or an aftermarket, for a stock replacement on this truck before labor, you're looking at sixteen to seventeen hundred dollars for a stock replacement turbo on this truck, which again, that's about three times the cost of the 7.3 Power Stroke. But we're going to get into the power differences and obviously the luxuries and differences in terms of ride quality that you're going to get. Because yes, it's more expensive to maintain and fix, but there's a lot of different options that you get with that sacrifice. So you guys have to weigh that out and decide whether or not it's worth it to you. The set of injectors for this truck is going to run you about three thousand bucks before any kind of labor, and that's probably going to be pretty similar to like your Duramaxes, your newer Cummins trucks, stuff like that. It's just. As soon as you throw a computer on these trucks and they have computerized fueling and timing for acceleration and fueling and all that, it's just more expensive. And also you have to keep in mind the demand for injectors on a truck like this are probably a lot higher than the demand for injectors on a 7.3 just because there's probably a lot more of these on the road being used in work settings than there are 7.3s anymore. So therefore the demand is going to be a lot higher. Now let's get to the good stuff. Why are you paying more for this truck in terms of parts versus this one, why are trucks getting more expensive, what's the cost associated, stuff like that. Like, what are you paying for? So we're gonna do some comparisons here, and I wanna talk to you guys about the differences between these trucks in terms of fuel mileage, um, comfort, suspension, and power output from a stock position. Now, this truck, of course, has a whole bunch of stuff done. It's got a pusher kit under the hood for airflow and all that stuff. This truck makes a lot of power. It's got tuning done, transmission tuning. It's awesome. Very different. It's also got a 2017 turbo in it, which was, I think, upwards of $4,000 for the turbo for that truck. That's a lot different than just a stock OEM replacement for 11 to 14 model years. This truck is a lot closer to stock. Therefore, this is gonna be more accurate reading in terms of the stock power output for this truck and torque. These numbers are based on stock power and stock pickups. So let's give you guys some comparisons. For the 6.7 Power Stroke, you're looking at about 400 horsepower at 2,800 RPMs and 800 foot-pounds of torque at 1,600 RPMs. That's a lot of horsepower and a lot of torque for a stock pickup truck. Coming on over to the 7.3 Power Stroke, you're making about 215 horsepower at a whopping 3,000 RPMs, which I'm gonna be honest with you, those are pretty high RPMs to get that kind of power out of. So that's why people always kind of crack on these trucks about being a rock and being slow, you know, like, you know, they're, they're just sluggish. They're just, they're not speed demons. Neither of these trucks stock are gonna be like a race truck. But of course, this truck has a lot more power, has a lot more torque, and it gets down much faster than this. Numbers don't lie. When you put twice the horsepower into something and twice the torque output, it's going to make a difference in terms of acceleration and all that stuff. So yes, this truck is much, much faster. But the other thing is too, you guys have to take into consideration reliability, cost of fixes, cost of maintenance. You guys have to decide what's more worth it to you. Are you guys willing to pay the extra cost for when things do break to have the luxuries and the speed and the power, the towing capacity, or do you lean more towards the more reliable, less complicated, cheaper to maintain, cheaper to operate pickup truck, but it's not as fast, can't haul quite as much. It doesn't put out quite as much power. In terms of fuel mileage, there might be some guys that argue this, but these trucks probably both average about the same in a stock configuration. This truck's probably going to get you about 12, 13 or so, maybe around town, maybe 18-ish when you're on the highway cruising on a stock setup. This truck, you're going to be looking at about the same thing. I don't care what anybody says, even if with the DEF stuff on it or whatever else. If it's stock, you're probably looking at about 13 to 15 around town, maybe, and then you're probably going to be looking more about 18 to 20 on the highway. But this truck, of course, deleted and tuned now on a four inch lift with 35s, gets about 15 miles per gallon on the highway cruising at about 65. It's not like night and day differences in terms of fuel mileage. It's not like, oh, I'm gonna go with this one because it's way better than this one. Now, fuel mileage, you're looking very, very similar. However, the power output for this truck and the torque output stock 
is much different than this one. And another thing you guys are gonna have to think about is the cost of buying a vehicle. This truck right here, if you can find one of these in great condition between 150 and 250,000 miles, it's gonna run you between 10 to 20 grand depending on condition, miles, four wheel drive, two wheel drive, all that stuff. Much, much different than the 6.7 Power Stroke. Something else to take into consideration is these trucks, the pricing market is very much so stabilized compared to the 6.7 Power Strokes. There's not that many trim levels in these. There's like XLTs, XLs, and I think they may have had like a couple of special edition up models way back in the day. But for the most part, these trucks don't really find their price points based on models. For the most part, these trucks find their price points based on a, is it rusted out or not? B, how's the paint holding up? Is it four wheel drive? And what kind of mileage is on the truck? For the most part, that is what's going to determine the pricing of these trucks. Compared to these trucks, the price point is gonna be a lot different model to model because there's so many variables. There's XLs, XLTs, Lariats, King Ranches, Platinums, Limiteds. There's so many different options to choose from. Therefore, the price point is going to be very, very different between them all. Now that might change in the next 10, 15 years when these trucks are no longer newer pickup trucks the model and price point for those models is probably going to slim down and become a very gray area and just kind of be based on is it high mileage or low mileage or is it four wheel drive versus two wheel drive that's probably going to be the main factor in these trucks in probably the next 10 to 15 years i can almost guarantee and now for this category all i'm going to do is let you guys hear what they sound like the difference between the two i'm actually going to start this truck up rev it a couple of times after a few seconds of letting it idle i've already driven the truck today and the 6.7's already warmed up for about 10 minutes. Ordinarily, I wouldn't recommend you just getting your truck and start revving it up if it's cold, but this one and that one have both been fairly close to being brought up to temperature operating temps. So we're gonna start this thing up, let it idle for a moment, and then give it a couple revs and let you guys hear it. <laughs> For this truck, we're gonna do the same thing, start it up, let it idle for five to 15 seconds, and after that, give it a couple of revs, just over 2,000 RPM. <laughs> So as you guys could probably hear, there's a very different sound between the two. I feel like this sounds much more similar to a Duramax um, in terms of sound compared to this versus this just kind of has that old power stroke sound. Very different sounds, similar, different enough to be very noticeable. That's the sound difference in exhaust. As you can see, the 6.7 power stroke was rolling coal. I don't know if this one was rolling any coal or not. I could just see it in the mirror of the 6.7. This is an accident, so I couldn't tell. Let me know down in the comments, did it roll coal? Now let me get into the suspension difference. So for the rear suspension, you've just got your typical leaf pack suspension. In the front, you have leaf suspension with one shock absorber. Coming over to the 2013 6.7 Power Stroke, you have leaf suspension in the rear, which is like the 7.3. In the front, you have 
coil suspension with a shock absorber and control arms. Well guys, that is where we're going to and the comparison between new versus old Power Stroke 7.3 versus 6.7. Those are the main differences. And one thing I forgot to mention is towing capacity. This truck is rated at about 12,500 pounds. Now, of course, I know guys that have way outdone that, but that's just what the technical rating is for this pickup truck. This pickup truck is rated at 22,500 pounds. And these were both found on the same website. So I don't know if this is just for like, you know, your, your rear hitch on the back end below the bumper, if that's what it's rated for. In that case, I don't know if these are gooseneck or fifth wheel ratings, it may not be, but regardless, those two numbers are very different. This is technically rated to haul about twice, or actually maybe a little bit more than twice the amount that this truck is. Just something to note, if you're doing a lot of hauling, a lot of driving, a lot of miles and comfort and powers that is a really big deal to you, this may be your application. If you're just somebody that really wants a diesel, they just like the idea of having one and they like old school stuff as it is, this might be a much better option in terms of overall cost of maintenance fixes, etc. This truck's probably gonna be a little bit easier on your pocket as long as you can find one. These are everywhere. These are not. Do not forget, if you'd like to enter to win the 7.3 Power Stroke right here, this OBS Forward, we are giving it away at LMPGear.com right now. Every $1 gets you more entries towards winning the truck, and all you have to do is place an order on the website, and as soon as you check out, you're automatically entered to win. Thank you guys so much. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.